we're live. It's a little after 1 p.m. Eastern time in Montreal. If you don't already know me, I'm Heather Boyd Wire and I do my show uh, Wire Lady TV every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And today is my 99th episode. So next week on the 100th episode, I'm going to be uh, celebrating. I'll probably have a couple of friends over and uh, if you're in the Montreal area, uh, let me know if you want to come and craft with me live next week on uh, Wednesday and uh, and yeah, so it's going to be a party. So I'm just going to pull up the video on uh, my laptop. Hey Clarice, you're the first one on. I'll pull up the, the video on the laptop and Joanna's here. Awesome. Hiya. They're perfect. So now I can see you guys on the big screen. I've got Charmaine and Peggy. Awesome. Hey, yeah, I don't have anything to do but rest my leg. Oh no, Peggy, what happened to your leg? Hi, Brandy. Hey, Timothy. How are you guys? Everybody's hopping on uh, quickly. That's fantastic. And as always, every Wednesday, I do, um, hey, Janine, I do live streams and Debbie. Uh, I do uh, just troubleshooting new ideas. There's Linda. Wow, you guys are all hopping on at once. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I troubleshoot new ideas. And also, um, I've started doing something new is I get uh, a lot of <coughs> orders on Etsy. So I'm starting to work out new designs for Etsy orders, too. So there's Paula, uh, Peggy, Torn. Oh, oh, no. Ouch, ouch, ouch. And let's see, who else? We have Antoinette, awesome. And from England, fantastic. Louise, great. Everybody's hopping on. You guys are so, so quick. I was a couple of minutes late, but just like, I keep forgetting I have to turn off my notifications on my uh, phone. Otherwise, uh, I get little pop-ups. And Jody, fantastic. Hey, Jody, are you at work today or you have the, the afternoon off? Hey Beverly, and is that Costume Theory? That's a cool username. Good morning. So you're a little earlier where you are. Maybe you're um, Pacific time. We're Eastern time here in Montreal. And as you can see, I have my little art little corner in the background. I don't know if you guys can see. That's my little my little happy nook uh, space. We were going to put a, a kitchen nook in our kitchen, but our kitchen's too small, so we put it in the living room. So I'm just gonna look, I love to watch. I'm on hospice, so it makes my day here. Yay, that's fantastic. Well, it's a nice little break in the middle of the week. So um, so it's really, it's really fun. And I'm gonna try to keep it a little bit shorter today just because I have to go out and do some errands and stuff. Sending good thoughts. Yes, we're all sending good thoughts uh, your way. That's fantastic. And Denise from Kansas City, woo, that's awesome, Kansas. Yeah, I have to do more traveling in the States. I'm gonna be going to New York sometime, maybe in the end of May, so thanks all. Yeah, feel, feel better. So guys, why don't I go ahead and flip the screen? I'm gonna show you a few things that I'm uh, working on and we're gonna work out some new things. So Jay Barry, you familiar with the wire, with wire technique? Hmm, what kind of wire technique? So Joanna, uh, how about them Chiefs? <laughs> Not in the sports, but I uh, guess that's a football team. Okay, so let's switch this around. I am going to switch our screen. There we go. So we're going to go over here, and I'm going to bring over my tools, and I'm going to just try to get this cord out of the way so I can see what we're doing. I'm going to get right centered here on the white so we can see. Here are our tools, and as always, guys, if I miss some of the comments, I really apologize. It's just hard to work and comment at the same time, but if I miss a comment and you want to try again, go for it, because I'm going to look up every now and then for sure. So here, I just want to show you a few things I'm working on. This is, uh, I do a lot of wedding cake toppers with my husband, so this is a wedding cake topper that I made. It's a, a couple, a silhouette of a couple on a tandem bicycle. So that goes on a cake, which is super cool. And I've actually made little mini kind of earrings with people on bikes too. This one's fun. It's a skidoo. So this is a couple on a skidoo and I'm going to write their names on there. So that's a fun, a fun little order. And then I'm going to show you, this is my husband makes little people on bicycles. So th this is the type of thing we sell in our Etsy shop. I don't do tutorials for these because this is this is sort of um, our business, but I do tons of tutorials for other techniques for wire art and jewelry. And today I had a few requests. So Victoria requested a standing bunny. So I'm going to start with that. I'm going to remove the, the cake toppers. I'm going to start, I'm going to try to figure out how to make a bunny 
that's standing. Now I've already done cats, standing cats and standing dogs. So let me see what I can do about a standing bunny. And I think I'm gonna maybe work with smaller wire because if it's too big, it's going to be hard for me to work underneath here. Everybody says, these are awesome. Thank you so much. I like how the, the, the hair is flowing. Thanks, Peggy. Yeah, it's, it's fun, eh, the skidoo? I, I get a few orders for those, which is really nice. And then the tandem bikes, of course, that's the classic. So we do a lot of bicycle cake toppers. I just received all kinds of new wire. So I ordered some wire. Here's here, I can show you guys. These are from the um, Artistic Wire Company. Well, the Beadalong Company that makes Artistic Wire so what I did was I bought a bunch of quarter pound spools. So I have a bunch of wire to last me forever. So Jody says she loved the cat angel. Yes, I shall, I'll show you guys actually a picture of the cat angel. That was, I was at my friend Allison's house last night and um, I brought, she asked me to make a, a special gift for one of her uh, friends. So I made a little, here it is. Here's the cat. So here's the cat angel. I've already made an angel like before that before. So that the angel was something I'd already done before, but she wanted the angel to have a cat. So what I did was I got a little cat bead that I had and just formed like a little body of a cat. And then I kind of attached the cat to the side of the angel. So that's something really special. And then I needed to take a picture and, um, and I didn't have a background. So I just, <laughs> placed it on the back of Allison's cat. So this is Bowie, Bowie's hair there. So I placed it as a backdrop for the photo. So that's that was really a fun project. And I, I get so inspired by friends and and uh, people that I meet when they have these really original ideas. So that was that was super fun. So let's try to do the bunny. So I'm gonna get a some of this artistic wire. Often I'll do the designs with um, aluminum wire as well, but I'll try it with this wire just to see. Uh, the advantage of the aluminum wire is it um, it bends really nicely, like on right angles. So if you are doing designs that need really crisp angles, uh, our, aluminum wire is great for that. But if you want something that's more smooth and flowy, copper wire is really good for that. So it's just different, you know, different wires for different purposes. So I'll cut a piece that's maybe about 18 inches long, something like that. And so uh, Timmy said, that's great. I lost my cat on Saturday. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, that's that's really sad. Oh my goodness. Well, we'll uh, we'll have to maybe maybe I'll make like a little cat angel design. That would be that would be sweet, eh? Like I think I have made little cat angels before. Little cat angels before. Oh, goodness. Timothy, are you in the Wire Art and Jewelry Makers Club? Uh, just let me know if you are. I don't remember if you said you were or not. If not, uh, yeah, if not, maybe you should email me a picture of your kitty and I can make a little a little cat angel. So if ever you want to email me pictures, it's info at heatherboydwire.com. And uh, I actually had someone on Instagram once send me a picture of their kitty cat and I painted a picture of their cat and that was really, that was really sweet. So uh, yeah, that's, that's sad when we lose our pets. So so guys, here's, I'm gonna start. Now, how is the best way to do the bunny? I have to figure about that. Maybe what I'll do is first is I'll start by doing a kind of a silhouette style that I usually that I usually um, do for the bunny. And then we'll go for there to, from there to see how we can make it a little more 3D. So there's Ken. Hey, Ken, how are you? Welcome, welcome. So let me just go ahead and start with a silhouette of a bunny and then we'll go from there. Cause sometimes I, some, the hardest part of doing a uh, wire art or any project really is just starting. And so my philosophy has always been just start by starting and then we go from there, right? So I'll show you how I do. Uh, have you ever had issues with the coating coming off? Yeah, definitely you have to be careful with the artistic wire because it does have a coating on it, a color coating. And so you wanna make sure you have good quality tools for sure. And um, sometimes when you put on a bead that has a too small hole, it can almost strip the wires. So I think you just have to be really careful about what kind of beads you use, what kind of tools you use, and also just to be really gentle with the wire because you don't want it to, um, 
you don't want uh, the color to rub off. But generally, I don't have a lot of troubles with it. So it's generally not too bad. So let's just go ahead. We're going to just form. I'll just do the bunny how I usually do it. And then I'm going to see how I go from there. The cat, for some reason, was easier. I'm not, I hadn't really envisioned how I was going to do the bunny yet. As always, I kind of just wing it. So if we just do the ears. So if we form, there's the bunny so far, just with the ears. And then we'll form another one there yeah bunnies are my favorite comment in the in the comments what's your favorite animal is anyone else a bunny lover i had bunnies growing up and i um had a bunny when my daughter was younger we had a rabbit her name was pepper we had her for many years actually she kind of outlived her lifespan she was a little bunny and she was only supposed to live about um I think they said six years, and she lived for eight, so she lived a long time. So I don't know how my proportions are. Sometimes when I'm doing the live stream, I get a little distracted, and I don't pay too much attention to proportions, but at least this will give you an idea of this shape. Goats are your favorite. That's cool. Dogs, cats and dogs. Awesome. That's really fun. I've never heard of, of a goat being a favorite, but the goats are supposed to be super special uh, animals. A platypus. That's an original one. That's wild. Do you have platypus everything at your house? My mom uh, has uh, loves giraffes, and so everybody used to always give her giraffes, but then she got too many giraffes, and she said, no more giraffes. So guys, this is just going to be forming the back leg of the bunny. They're so loving. That's cool. What, have you ever done goat yoga? I've certainly heard about goat yoga where people go and they do yoga and there's like little goats jumping up all over them. So, uh, yeah, I think the goat yoga is a thing. I, in fact, I've heard of, uh, uh, bunny yoga that I would love that actually platypus was my high school nickname. How interesting. And bears. Yeah. Bears are sweet too. Definitely. So guys, here's, okay, here's the, the silhouette of the bunny. So now the question is, how would we get it to stand up? But usually what I end up doing when I make a 3D animal is I would just go around here and I just form like the back of it. I'm just going to do it the same way I do the cat and see if it's going to work. So we bring this around here. But what I might want to do is a little circle here just to hold this wire in place. Otherwise, it's going to wing all over the place. So I'm just going to do a teeny little circle midway sort of at the butt. Uh oh, looks a little rude, looks a little bit like a butthole, which is not my intention, but it's just basically to anchor the to anchor the um, other wire in place. So there we go. So we're going to go like that. And then we're just going to do a little leg here. Foxes. Oh, that's nice. Goats in pajamas hopping all around. <laughs> there we go. So let's just do the other leg of the bunny. See, I don't know if you guys can see well, but I'm just going around and doing the other side of the bunny. This is going to be cute, I think. Uh, like I said, I've done this exact same design for dogs and cats. And those are, we, we actually sell them in our Etsy shop as little add-ons to the cake toppers. So people will get a cake topper with something that, you know, their hobby or if they're musicians or whatever. And then often they'll ask for a little add-on animal. So if this works out, I can add it to my Etsy shop as like a little add-on animal. So we'll see a little add-on bunny. So we'll see. Did you ever think of making a giraffe? Yes. Hi. Or an eagle. I don't think I've made an eagle, but I've definitely made giraffes before. I've made giraffes for my mom because she's a giraffe fan. I made giraffe earrings, giraffe pins. I've even made once I got a special request for a giraffe on a bicycle as a cake topper. So I've definitely done giraffes. So guys, here's so far the bunny like that. You can see it's very stylized, right? So we're going to bring this around and then I'm going to just stick this in that little hole there to hold it in place. Okay, we'll stick it in there. And then at that point, you could kind of adjust it and see how big or small it has to be. I think I made the ears a little bit small so and then we're going to bring this around here and then we can form a little tail so we can maybe just mm, could bring it just around that way or we could kind of bring it in here because sometimes you want to secure it a little more in place so if we just bring it down here a little bit it's going to hold it in place a bit and there we go. Inga says, hey, Heather and everyone. Hey, how are you? And De Deanna's here too. Did you ever, De Deanna, was that your first comment? I'm, I'm losing track of who was, 
who hopped on and who's who I said hello to al already. So I'm sorry if I if I forget or if I say hello to you twice or what have you. I'm really happy that everybody's here. So there we go. So here's like that. And then we can form a little a circle for the tail. So let's just go around here and make a little circle. Okay, for the tail. And you could even, if you wanted to, make it like a little spiral or something. You can you can do the tail however you want. So I have a little extra. I could make it into a spiral just for fun. So let's just take this and bring it in and make it. And I'm not sure if this bunny, uh, the if Victoria had asked for the bunny. So I don't know if she actually wants it standing. I could try another design of the bunny actually standing because this one is more like sitting, kind of lying down. Now the question is, what do I do with this? little end here. Usually when I do uh, the dog or the cat, I just attach it in the middle and it becomes like a little collar. Uh, bunnies don't really have collars, but I think I'll just do it in the same way, just so it's nicely attached there. So if I hold it in here and then just bring it around, then we can just somehow like make sure those are more or less in the same position and then just twist this around here. So Deanna says a curl at the ends with the tail. That is awesome idea. And did you also do a peacock? Ooh, I don't think I've ever done a peacock, but that's a really fun idea. I should definitely try that. Yeah, in fact, you know what? When you guys give me suggestions, I'm just gonna grab my pen, Sharpie, and I'm gonna write that down. So Deanna suggested a peacock. I will write that down. And that would be super fun to do with beads. Yeah, that would be dope. <laughs> Beverly's right. So there we go. So let's just cut the little end off. Of course, always the question is how you finish things off. Eh? But for now, I'm just going to like finish it here. And then I might think if I did it again, I might think of a better way to finish it. And then, of course, the hard part is the adjusting. This is a very thin wire. This is 20 gauge. So I would definitely uh, use a thicker gauge if I was to do it again. And then if we just split open the ears, they look kind of cute like that. So it's, you know, it doesn't look great at all angles, but it's not too bad. And the thing is like, now I have this prototype, so I can definitely work on it and do some different things for it. So here's our little bunny. It's not too bad. <coughs> little, uh, it's a little chubby for the proportion of the ears. Maybe I could just squish it in a little bit to see. So there's our little bunny, our little stylized bunny. <laughs> and uh, Ken says, you're an amazing artist. Oh, thank you so much. A bow. Ooh, a bow for the bunny would have been good. That's definitely a good idea. So let's try another one. And we can try it um, standing up. So I have some other gold wire that I'm going to use. Here, let me find it. This is actually the artistic wire, but it's a uh, brass color. So let's try that. Okay. Oh, uh, I was thinking it would look like a stained glass. Ooh, that would be interesting. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, with the nail polish. Oh my God, you guys are on fire. I'm going to write these down too. I could try it with the nail polish. Yeah, nail polish. And let me keep track. Peggy said that. Okay, good. So I'm going to just see what I could do. I like that stained glass idea. Um, The bunny is so cute. Do you think this can go on like a flip? on a candle or candle base. Um, what do you mean like a flip? I'm not quite sure, but you could definitely put it on a cake. That would be cool. You just gotta run. You see you, yeah, see you later, Jody. Thanks for hopping on and you can watch the replay. So let me cut another little piece of wire and I'm gonna see about doing a standing bunny and um, see how that's going to go. I think we would just do it the same way, right? So if we just, go ahead and or we could do a different like we could even do a different style bunny let me try it the face slightly differently guys or oh, tea light candle holder oh yeah you could maybe figure out a way to make it like into a candle holder i have one design uh on etsy that's like a guy on a bike holding a candle like in his hand like that so that's super cool but i like the idea of like creating something that can actually be a candle holder. The only problem with that is if the wax gets on the piece, it's it's gonna maybe not be the best. It might kind of ruin it a little bit, but uh, 
But yeah, I mean, if you're, if you don't mind, if it gets a little wax on it or whatever, I guess, depending on the design. So the other way I do a bunny head is I would just do like, it almost looks like a heart, but the, uh, the, those are long and skinny for the ears. And then if we bring it out like this, okay, we're going to bring these out here like that. And then I'm going to form sort of the face of the bunny. So let me just bring like the little Sharpie. That's a little bit, I think that one's, let me get a pen because that one's a little bit big. So if I get a pen, it's going to be slightly smaller. So I'll get like a little, this, this is actually a pen I destroyed to use as a, as a template like for, for the wire art. So if we go around here and form one little cheek here, and then we're gonna go around here and form the other little cheek of the bunny here. So this is going to look more like a cartoony kind of stylized bunny. I think it'll be cute. So if we go in here, okay, so we have our little bunny face like that. And then I'm going to bend one end here, okay, and bend this around here. Okay, and then we're going to form some little whiskers. So if we go down and down... We're going to form a couple of little whiskers. Okay, back and forth. Sorry for the scratchy sound. That's the uh, the wire just scratching on the surface. So if we go in like that, then you could put you could put beads if you want for the eyes or you can just make little circles. Okay. And just bring that down. And then this one too, we can just form some whiskers. And I don't remember, but I might have done something like this on the template. I did a lot of, uh, a whole series of designs you could do with the Artistic Wire Deluxe Jig Kit. And it's very possible I did the bunny. I just don't remember. I'd have to look back and see. So this is sort of the basic design. So there's the little... <laughs> already adorable thank you so yeah like I said my proportions sometimes when I do the live streams aren't super great because I'm just kind of winging like going through very quickly but here's here's how the bunny looks like that now if we wanted it to stand up I just have to see the best way to do it um but 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 yeah hmm. I just have to think of how I want to do this because you'd want like some little arms you want, uh, sometimes it's easier to just to draw it out. Let's see what I have. So if you do the, like the little bunny like that. And so I'm not sure the best way, like if we do it like, hmm, I'd have to see, cause sometimes you could do like, you don't want them to look like little boobs though. So that might look a little odd. So if we just got them down. I'm going to have to work on this idea. I'm not quite sure how I want to do the bunny. If you guys have any suggestions for a good way to do it, um, I'm just drawing a bit of a blank right now. So unless we went ahead and do it, do it sort of the same way that I did the other one, I think I'll do that for now. Yeah, just for now, I'm just going to do it very simply. So if we just bring this out here, Call this bunny the love bunny. Yes, it's true. You could definitely do that. And the other thing you could do is just do some beading around it and stuff. So say you want to form the, the legs the same way. I probably should have a bunny while I'm like picture while I'm working on it. So often what I do is I'll do them like at the same time. So say we just put the art the legs out like that. And then because I know I'm going to run out of wire with this uh, because this wire is super short. So instead of actually yeah, instead of actually making the legs how I formed them before, I'm going to just try something different and just bring these out here, okay? And you could kind of combine the two techniques to see, like the one I did before and then this one. So if we bring this one back like this, I'm just winging it because I'm running out of wire. So if we bring these back here, so say we go back here, and then we'll bring this one around. I'm really going to run out of wire, but that's okay. So if we're going to bring that one around like this, this is sort of, he's still going to be sitting down. He's not going to be standing up after all, but that's okay. I could maybe do a standing one another time. And then the idea for this is we could bend this one back. 
See, if we bend this one back a little bit, okay, that's gonna be sort of the center back. And then I might put a bead on it too, just for do, doing something different. And see, this one's much skinnier than I thought it would be because this, I'm running out of wire here. So that's fine, we're just gonna do this. And then we're gonna twist this around, okay, to connect them. Okay, we'll twist that one right around and then bring that straight up. This is really cute. I've actually never made one quite like this before. So you guys, uh, you guys are uh, my guinea pigs for watching, creating this new design. So a bead, yes, bead, bead, bead. Okay, Gigi, let's do the bead. Let me find one. I have, um, I think a little pearl bead would, would be super cute. This one's like an eight millimeter bead. So that's, that's adorable. Let's put that. And then what you can do is just bend the wire. Like if I was a longer wire, I'd bend it back underneath, but I really have so little wire to work with. So I'm just going to twist it in for now. And it's just going to kind of hold that bead in place. And then, oh, he's going to be a cute little chubby bunny. So we're going to, does anyone know that game, chubby bunny? The kids play it sometimes. Apparently you just keep sticking marshmallows in your mouth and you keep saying chubby bunny until you can't say chubby bunny anymore. <laughs> a lot of people on YouTube have done that challenge. Karen says hello from Buffalo, hello. So now we're just gonna form the back. This is sort of center back. And Ananka says, hello everyone. Hey, how are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. So here is sort of the, do a nice little stylized back of the bunny. And then what you wanna do is attach it in the middle of the head. So we're gonna attach it in the middle of the head. I'm just gonna take this one here and help it out a little bit, stick it here. This is a little bit long, so we'll just trim it a bit here. And then we're gonna bring it through. Okay, so we're gonna get this, bring it through. Okay, and then what I always like to do is I'll post better pictures of these, the finished products in the community section of the Facebook uh, or of the YouTube page. So you guys will be get, get a better of idea of how they actually look. So now we're going to clip that end. Okay, and then we want to pinch it in so it holds in place. Sometimes it's a little bit different, difficult to access it, but if we just kind of bring that in and then we want to pinch it in place. Okay, perfect. So that's in place. So here's our little bunny, kind of cute, very stylized with the little bead. So that's super fun. So we didn't make a standing bunny, but see, he sits up quite well which is really cute. So we have two kinds of little bunnies here. Love it, says Irene. Awesome, very cute, awesome. So here's our two bunnies. I think I like this guy. I like his little face. He's really cute. Yeah, and you can even put little beads on the for the face as well. So that's super fun. And then the other thing I wanted to work on was um, I had uh, someone on the carol in the... Um, in the Facebook page, she posted this picture of a design that she wanted to work on. So, um, oh, the cuteness, thanks guys, it's awesome. So Carol had posted this picture she found on Pinterest in the Wire Art and Jewelry Makers Club. And I thought I'll give it a shot. I'm gonna see how, how it goes. And she was actually wondering if you could buy these pieces on uh, find these findings on uh, online, and I couldn't find them anywhere. So you could either do it with a um, flattened wire, or you can do it with a regular wire. So I thought I would try it both ways. And so what I'm going to do is I just I have a thicker wire. It's uh, aluminum wire as well. It's 1.6 millimeters. So I'm gonna try a couple of different ways. So here's a piece, just like a plain piece like that. So let's try it not flattened to start. And what I like to do is take a round form. So I actually have all these pill bottles that I keep one inside another like that. And then they're handy if I need different sizes of round forms. So let's start with one of these. Uh, this might be a little small. They look like they're a decent size, right? So if we start with one of these and bring it around, let's see if it's going to be the right size. We're just going to form this around, okay, here. And then you want these sides to be a little, a little bit straight. So if we're going to bring this, whoops, sorry, there, whoop, 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 
Where did it go? There we go. So we've got this here. Let me move this over here a little bit. Okay, and so we're going to just form this. Make sure these are a little bit straight. Okay, this goes in here. And even if what you can do if you wanted to is just print a picture out of the internet and uh, and just uh, trace like kind of trace it like that. So you could do that if you wanted to. Just print out one of these pictures and trace it. I found I'm gonna just start again because I found my wa my wire got a little bit pink. So I'm gonna go ahead and start again. Sometimes it's better to have a longer piece to work with. So we're gonna go around here. So Deanna says these are very beautiful with blue but any color would be pink or purple and green as well yeah they're gorgeous eh? and this one looks like it's got like natural stones so that's really really cool so yeah sometimes it's easier if you start with a longer piece of wire so it's easier to bend this one is this wire is kinking a little bit and that's because it's aluminum sometimes the aluminum can kink and so let's just put it on here and then you can decide you know how high you want it so if you want to make sure that it's somewhat um, symmetrical, so let's start by, we'll just move one of the ends up like that and then kind of eyeball it. But if you traced a picture, you would definitely uh, be able to do it more symmetrical, but you can just kind of wiggle around with it to make sure that it looks like it's symmetrical. So if we go in like this, okay, this is more or less the idea. And then you want to bend these ends in. So we'll just take these here. There's a couple of options here. It looks like this is just a nice smooth circle. I was thinking you could do little loops in there to hold in your pieces. But let's start by doing something like this just to get it uh, a basic shape started. So if we go in like this, okay, if we're going to go in here and then just make sure... These are about in the same position, okay? And then we're gonna clip these in here. Okay, so already we have this basic shape that you can put on a necklace. And I know you guys in the group are gonna do tons of beautiful stuff with, stuff with this design. I think it's a really great classic design. And so this is one, okay, one option. So we start like that, you can start like that. And then another option would be to, maybe we'll take a slightly smaller uh, wire. So I'm gonna take a piece that is a 1.2 millimeters piece of wire. And we're gonna try, we're gonna do a few just to compare them. Okay, so we'll take one piece here. So same idea, we're gonna get our round form, okay? And we're gonna bring it around, okay? Maybe even smaller. We can try a smaller one. I'll use the end of my ring cone. Okay, we'll try a smaller one here. And there we go. Uh, sorry, I'm missing some comments. So can you make, you know, can you use make an earring or are they too heavy? These might be okay as an earring if you used a lighter gauge wire. Like this one's a slightly lighter gauge. This is the, um, the 1.2 millimeter. So if we're gonna, and we can make this one like a little more round in there. So the thought I had with this one was maybe we can do like just a couple, and this is where we're gonna compare the two designs and see what they're like. So if we do a little circle here, just teeny, like it really doesn't have to be very big, okay? Just a teeny little circle here, okay? And then another teeny little circle here, okay? Just just really small because we can use small wire, we can use a skinny wire to go inside there. And then we're gonna do this one here. Hi, oh, Jean, oh, Jean is here from Alaska, nice, that's awesome. Okay, so we're gonna do another one on this side, so somewhat centered, and don't worry if it's not super in the same position, we can, we can definitely tweak that, okay? So we're gonna got this one, and just try to make sure these two are the same distance apart. So we're gonna do this one here. Okay, whoop, this keeps shutting off. So this is gonna be uh, useful because these, at least your wires aren't gonna slip around everywhere. So if we do something like this, okay, and then it looks like these just go straight up. And like I said, to get the shape proper, you can always either draw it out on a 
graph paper to make sure it's symmetrical or you could find this image or I can it's on the Facebook page and you can trace it you know you could definitely trace the image to get more or less the right uh, the right size so now we're going to take our round pliers do the same thing what we did before to make these these are what the uh, chain is going to go through so we're going to go through here make sure they're more or less in the same uh, same uh, position. Now you don't want to go too thin with this outside wire because this part here is going to be fragile, right? So that's why the the 1.6 millimeter looks like it would be really good, like a 16 16 gauge. Um, this one is, yeah, this one's like between a 16 and an 18 gauge. So there we go. So we're gonna this we have two possibilities so far for a basic you know, a base shape. So we've got this one and we've got that one. And then the other idea would be to actually flatten it. So if you're gonna do the flattened one, I'm not gonna do it super big because the rolling mill that I have is not uh, super wide. So we're going to just take this and do the shape again, okay? Okay, we're gonna go around here and looks like it just comes right in there around here but the thing we're going to have to keep in mind whoops is I'm not going to form the circle I'm not going to form the round things yet because uh, they're going to get they're going to get squished so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend this up okay and then bend this one up here and then I have to predict like how long they're going to have to be because I'm I'm going to have to like bend them so let's just imagine if I roll it around, say they're going to be about, I'm going to try for about five eighths, half an inch to five eighths of an inch. Now, if you want to get them the same height, just bring that in. So guys, now I'm going to bring you and we're going to flatten it, but I have to unplug my iPod and I hope I don't get disconnected, but I'm going to do my best to make this work. So I'm going to take this, okay, I'm going to, just bring this around. Good. So I'm going to bring you down to my rolling mill. So I don't know if I'm going to catch your comments, but I'm just going downstairs because I keep the rolling mill downstairs. I'm going to bring you down here and I will show you what it is. And hopefully I can somehow do this and uh, show you guys. So here's, let me flip the screen. Here's the rolling mill. This is in our basement. And then what you do is you stick it in the rolling mill here. Hopefully I'm gonna be able to do this with two hands. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do this. So let me try to prop up my camera. This, I'm gonna just try to prop up the camera. Uh, let's see, here, and hopefully it won't fall. So I'm gonna prop up the camera. I'm gonna put this in, and then we're gonna, we roll the handle whoops here's there we go so now we roll the handle and it's going to go through the rolling mill okay and it's going to come out on the other side so it's squished it's squished and now i'm going to flip the screen and i'm going to bring it back upstairs there we go perfect so we're going to go upstairs Perfect. I'm trying to hold you with one hand. Here's my piece that's flattened. So that was quite the adventure. It's like a scene out of a horror film. Yee! There we go. So let me put you back on the tripod. I'm going to flip the screen again. Perfect. Okay. Get you back in there. And I'm going to plug this in again. So that was quite the adventure. I hope nobody's too, too uh, dizzy. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So we're back. So let's get this one back, okay, and get the picture back. So that's what we're working on. And then here's our flattened piece. Okay, so that was pretty good. Uh, let me just adjust this. We have something in the way. There we go. Perfect. So now what you would want to do with this one that's flattened. Now, if you don't have a rolling mill, you can use, um, you can hammer it. And uh, I did, I do have a, a link to an Amazon, uh, I have like a mini shop on Amazon, so I have a link where you can buy the rolling mills, 
or sometimes you can get away with a pasta maker if the wire's not too thick. You take us to such wonderful places. places. Well, last year, no, two years ago, when I first started doing the live streams, I actually did one from New York City. And I remember I took everybody on a little tour of the hotel I was staying in. I should link up that one below. That was really super fun. So I definitely want to do more traveling and more live streams in the future. So now see with this flat one, now you're going to bend it after, okay, after it's already been flattened. So then you're going to bend it like that. So it looks like maybe I could have cut them a little bit smaller, but you know what? It's fine. You can, you could always, if you find that it's like needs to be cut a little bit more, you can always recut it a little bit more. I don't know why one ended up being a little bit bigger than the other, but this is the idea here. So, uh, Late video peeps, <laughs> thank you. So there we go. So here's our, this one's really nice, the flat one. I think I like that one the best. It's super cool. Yeah, this is this is a really good one. So love this, thanks for sharing. Yeah, what about pasta maker for wire? Yes, so I do, I use sometimes use a pasta maker to flatten the wire. That's in one of my Tip Tuesday videos. So I'll link up that one below as well. So look guys, we have these three pieces that are similar to that. And now I'm going to get uh, some other wire and I'm going to attach some beads and some stones. So let me see, mm. I actually don't even think I have those long stones. So I'm going to see what I have for other beads and see if I have anything long like that. I really, I actually didn't come prepared at all for any, any appropriate beads. So I really don't know if I have anything. I don't know if I have anything suitable, but let's see. I'm just going to see some of these beads in here and uh, ba -da -ba -da. like I do have some long beads. Uh, this one is maybe not too bad. Like I guess you could, maybe I'll try something like that because this is the only this is the only long bead that I could find. But maybe I could do like a variety of beads like this. Oh my my iPad died, so let's get rid of that, and I'll try to find another picture of it later. So I have a bunch of beads that maybe I could do some things with. Uh, so let me just grab a few of these beads. And then I'll see if I can sort of um, intermingle some other, some beads together. So I'm going to just bring this one over on my other table and put this here. So let's just keep working on these here. So I'm going to cut a piece of wire and I already forgot what these look like, but uh, um, I could probably look them up on the computer, but let me just try. See, I got a little piece of wire here. This is thinner wire. It's it's almost, it's probably 22 gauge. It's almost 20. So just to show you how you would do something like this. So if I put like a little string of beads across, I'm going to see what kind of beads that I have that might work well. I think they're going to have to be pretty small for this because otherwise they're not going to really... Um, they're not going to really fit in two lines. So if I do a bunch of little beads across. I don't know what these beads are going to look like. I think I'm going to do this one just really stylized and um, and see what happens from there. So if I put three, let's just do this one like really modern and stylized and then we'll go from there. So the idea behind this is you want to bend here and then this one too. So you're going to basically bend it like that. Okay. And you can Mm, you know what? I'm going to leave a little extra. I think I'm going to leave a little extra. So I'm going to leave a little extra here so we have a little bit of slack and bring this here. And then all you have to do is put these two wires in here. And hopefully these holes are big enough. If they're not, you can wiggle this around a little bit. There we go. So that's the idea. We'll stick these two, these ones in here. So that's kind of cool, very funky. These are my favorite miracle beads. And we're gonna bend this to the back, clip this here. Yeah, it's good to have a little slack and then you could bend the, the ends in a little bit better. So we're gonna just stick this one down here and here. And for sure I'm missing some comments now, but uh, I'm gonna go back and, and check them in a little bit. So there we go. So we have these here. 
So, and then you can adjust this at the top. And then this is the part that will go through the chain. So if we have these ones here, and then we'll get another wire. Okay, we'll get another little wire here. And I'm going to get some more beads. So I don't know if I'll stick with these ones or, or what I'm gonna do. And we could even do like a little purple. I have a purple bead too. This, these purple beads are really pretty. So it's just a matter to see how many more we're going to need here. So maybe we would need need some more on either side. These might be too big. It's going to depend on sort of the angle of what you can, uh, you can do blue and pink. I could do pink. I could do pink actually. So let's do, let's do a pink one. You caught me just in time. There we go. So we put a pink, the hot pink one in there. And then in that case, actually, that's a good thing because I have the same hot pink in little beads. So hopefully they're going to fit across. We're going to see what's going to happen there. So we have these. And then if we bend that one here and then this one here, and then we can stick those in here. So this is just... You know, one option, um, there's so many different possibilities. I really like those ones with the stones. Um, probably some of you guys already have those long stones like that. So this, we can stick this one in here. This is really just to show you guys techniques. And then what you do beyond that, like the pictures that you guys are sharing in the Facebook group are amazing. Uh, it's like you start with an idea and then you just do your own your own spin on it and it's so cool I just love seeing what everybody comes up with so here's this one and the great thing about this there's a lot more you can do with it but the and in fact it might be nice to dangle something down there but just to show you that this is great because it holds in place because of these little these little um, uh, round things at the side and I might end up like removing you know what I might end up doing is taking this yeah, I'm going to do it already because I'm, I don't like that empty space there so much. So I think what I'm going to do is just remove this and start that that one again a little bit. So because I like the idea of maybe hanging something down from there. So if we remove this, I'm going to get another wire. And what we can do is either do a loop or not. I'm going to try it with a loop just to see how it looks. So if I do a little loop here, okay, put a little loop here, and then we're just going to do the pink beads again, say the pink and blue again, just to see how it looks. And then I'm going to try to hang something down to see, see what kind of difference it makes. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. But I mean, the possibilities are endless. You can really just start with this idea and just keep going uh keep going with it whoops let's put the pink one there okay we're going to put a pink one there on that side yeah so I'll, what i'm going to do is just do a couple of little basic things and then you know you guys can do your own thing with it too so if we put that there okay we have a nice little loop to hang something from and then we're just going to bend that here and that one Okay, so we'll go here, and this you can adjust a little bit more too if you have to. So then we're gonna go ahead and put these in here. Put one on either side. Uh, sometimes you have to clip the end of the wire a bit too to, um, to make sure the end is smooth to be able to get it in. So we'll stick these ones in here. Okay, so those are kind of cool. And bend the ends. Bend that one, and then bend this one. Got to finish washing later, no problem. Yeah, so the, the live streams used to be a lot quicker, but we end up, I end up do working on a lot more projects now. So we end up going a little bit, like almost an hour. So so here's, here's this one. And the advantage of watching the replay is you can fast forward it too. So this, this way I've done it with like a little space for a bead to hang down. So in that case, you can actually just like get a bead and hang it down. And I actually had this bead that was already on a, I'd already done this one. This one was left over from a video I did about making chain links. So uh, let's just go ahead and use this piece that I already had and hang it on here. So you can hang a little charm on there. 
you can hang a bead, you can you can hang anything down that you want. So, and because I don't have those long stones, I'm just going to make do. So here's here's this one. Here's a very like a very, you know, rough start to the design. And then the other idea would be to, um, you know, this one that's flat, it's going to be a little easier to add things to. But I was thinking if you wanted to just give the um, the uh, appearance of beads hanging down, you could maybe get a few long beads and do like a line across and hang them down. But this is almost, I have too many here. So I think we would just want to do one one bead hanging down. And then some other, I do have some little stones. I'll show you the stones that I have because those are good to use, especially for that design because that design had stones in them. So I do have a tray of stones here. So these are the stones that I have. So you could definitely use some of these stones to do, uh, you know, different, different designs. And these are cool. These are actually amber. These are real amber. Uh, someone had given me an amber necklace and I just took it apart and did some stuff with. So, so you could definitely do something with the amber here to hang it on. And then basically what you would do is just like stick it on and wrap it across. So what I would want to use for that is like a more, a thinner wire. You could even use gold if you wanted to, you know, it, you could use a gold wire for contrast. Or I have just a like a 24 gauge silver wire. So let's just try a little bit of the 24 gauge silver. Get rid of some of these. Okay. And I'm missing some comments. Uh, Yvonne says, hi everyone, I'm late, but oh, okay, awesome Yvonne, just in time, because I'm just gonna go for another few minutes and then you can watch the replays. So Deanna says, you can use amber color with the pearls. Ooh, that would be really, really pretty. Uh, and the long blue bead. Well, that, that could be interesting too, definitely. So for now, let's just stick a few of these amber beads on here just to see how they look. And these amber beads are nice because they're pretty, they're pretty long. Um, yeah, they're, I think it's from a vintage uh, amber necklace, which is really cool. So, so yeah, there's some nice long ones here. This is probably the best you know, choice that I have for actual beads. But yeah, so the idea would be to do something similar to the, the picture is we could just put a bunch of beads here, okay? And then all you would do, and it, they're gonna stay in place pretty well because the um, the flat wire is going to hold the wire in place better. The trouble with the round wires, the wire can slip around. So basically all you would wanna do is just wind it around a few times here. Okay, I'm gonna keep it super simple. I know we could definitely mix beads in with it, but I think for today, I'm just gonna keep it super simple. And then this one too, we're going to just wind it around a few times. Okay, around here. And unfortunately, I can't re-show you the photo of the piece because, um, well, maybe I can show it on my computer. It's just my iPad died, so I can't show you the piece right now. But here, so you see the 24 gauge wire uh, winds around quite nicely on there. Let me remove this for now. And so we just put it and then adjust this so it's about the right height on either side. And take your flat pliers and then just give it a little bit of a squish. Not too much that you're going to damage the wire, but enough so it's going to grip on there and it's not going to go back and forth. So here we have... This works quite well. Um, the ones in the sample, the beads hang down, hung down much lower. So you would want maybe stones that have uh, holes more to one side. So there's that one. And then the idea for this last one is I was thinking you can just take this wire and make, you could actually use head pins if you have some head pins. I don't have any head pins handy because, um, so instead of doing a head pin, I'll just do like a little loop on the end. Okay, make your own head pin. Stick this one on here. So there automatically, you're going to have one that, a bead that you can hang down. So if we put this at about, like cut this to about three eighths of an inch, and why make your little, your little loop like this. So now you have a piece that you can hang down in here. 
So let me see if I have with we could try it with the with the um with the amber and the pearls. So let's do these ones here. And amber has great pro properties, absolutely. I don't think I have any bugs in this amber, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Let me see what I have. I don't really have any pearls. I'm just gonna look at what beads I have handy. She here's a pearl. They're not real pearls. They're just like little little fake pearls. So we have those. I think I want to use something different than amber just to differentiate it a little bit from the other ones. So I like the idea of the pearls. Let me see what else I have. I have some other stones that I can look at. And let me just see. I also love hematite. Hematite's beautiful. And let me see what else I have. I used to have blue stones, but I don't seem to have any anymore. I also have uh, amethyst. Actually, is this do? Ooh, this is interesting. I just found some interesting stones here. Let me just see what these are. Okay, I found these. Sometimes I find random stuff in my in my pieces. So I do have this, which is sort of, but it's not really the same color blue. And this was something that broke. So maybe those aren't gonna work. No, those aren't gonna work. And I'm just gonna see if I have some. Oh, I have some other stones here. I have these white ones. These are like, I think these are going to be too thin. So, and I also have these, which are kind of nice. Wow, so there's so many possibilities, guys. This is interesting. I like these these um, more natural ones because the pearls that I have are fake pearls, so I don't like the way they look. But these are just, they almost look like mother of pearl uh, uh, but I think they're stones. I'm not quite sure what they are actually, but I can just pull a few of these off. This is like a bracelet that probably I got a, at a garage sale or something, but I can definitely reuse these pieces. These, these actually might be mother of pearl. I don't think they're stones. So, but just take a few of these pieces off and then I can reuse them. My friend Patricia actually goes to tons of garage sales and she gets so many uh, beautiful, like, old necklaces and stuff that she cuts apart and she uses for her for her pieces so if ever you're looking for an inexpensive way to uh, get a good collection of beads uh, I highly recommend in the summer to go to some garage sales and just pick up some random random beads so here we go we have some uh, amethyst I have some uh, hematite and I have some of the mother of pearls so there's like quite a nice little collection of stones I'm actually due to go go to my stone shop and get more stones as well so say we do something like this and then I'm going to just get my wire a little thinner wire here okay hopefully the it's not uh, too thick because the trouble with stones is sometimes the holes are too small so say we go ahead and put like this little piece on here and then we're going to put a little bit maybe a little white one on either side and um actually this i'm worried this wire is going to be too thick oh no it's not too bad i thought it wouldn't fit too well so if we put this one and the hematite oh this doesn't look great but it's just to give you guys the idea so if we do something like that and I'm not sure about the hematite. Let's see, put this on. And with the with the um with the amethyst, I'm not even sure about that. <laughs> let's put these ones on. And let's see what else if I have another blue. Maybe I have another little blue that would work. I'm just gonna see if I have blue in my miracle beads. I'm not super creative with with choice of bead colors, so I think I'm just gonna keep it pretty simple. And then, you know, this is just a sample, so it's fine. So if we go, that one's a little bit broken. So if we go in here and put that one, and I'm gonna do this one on this side. Okay, glad to catch you live again. Awesome, okay, so we're just finishing up. Uh, you could definitely watch the replay. I'm just gonna try to finish this up so um, I have a finished product here. I just have to get one more blue bead. If I could find a blue bead in my collection. Yeah, this is the miracle bead. And then what I'll do is I'll post pictures of these in the Facebook group, in the Wire Art and Jewelry Makers Club. And uh, with along with the picture that Carol sent me of her, what she wanted to make. 
And then you guys can just, you know, go nuts with it. Make your own things. Come up with some interesting combinations of, of beads and stones. I would love to see what you guys make. So, so for today, we're just going to keep it super simple. Just because I don't really have time to do a lot of the scissors. So we'll just keep it like this. Very easy. And then you want to bend these wires up. Okay, we're going to bend them up. And then you're going to choose where you want it to hang in the piece. Uh, now I don't have anything to anchor these, um, to anchor the, uh, what do you call it, the um, the wire so it doesn't slip. I'm going to just give it a little bit more slack here, put this one on, on here, okay. Because you want, you also want the piece in the dangling piece in the middle to be able to continue to dangle. So you don't want to put this on too tightly. So what we can do is start by just winding it around one side. So I'll just go around here, wind it around a couple of times on this side. Now, as your as your uh, thing is on an angle, it should hold it in place and it shouldn't slip down. So it's just a matter of kind of trying to anchor it. So this one dangles a bit. So let's wind it around the other side. Okay, we're gonna wind it around a couple of times, uh, two or three times. I think that's gonna be good. And then just bring it right to the back, okay cut that and then this one too we're going to cut it okay and I'm just going to move these out of the way and then you want to press them together tighten them up a bit this one too just press it together tighten it up again a bit and then you want to make sure these are more or less at the same height this one too, you, this is where you do your adjustments. So you could definitely like pinch them in a little bit more if you need to and like give it a squish so it's not gonna move all over the place so it won't be scratchy. And there we have our third one. So it's not perfect, but that's the idea guys. So you have all three different designs of uh, ways to make the, the loop. One with the little loops on the side to hold it in place. And then you have this one that's a flattened wire, and then this one that's just the round wire, um, and then you just wind this around here. So tell me which is your favorite uh, one as far as like the base is concerned. I think I like the flat one. I'm pretty sure the flat one is the best. And let's just bring this over here. I'm gonna take the camera, my iPod out of the stand so I can go a little closer. There we go. Late again, but love what I'm seeing. So here we go. So here are the three ones. So Yvonne likes the blue one. Nice. And then, uh, yeah, so what I'll do is I'm going to keep experimenting with it. I'm going to put pictures in the group. I'm going to flip my screen now because I got to go. I got to go pick up my daughter and we have some errands to do. So guys, thank you so much for hopping on the live stream. Uh, be sure to give the video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel for lots more DIY wire art and jewelry makers uh, videos. Um, also join the Facebook group, the Wire Art and Jewelry Makers Club, uh, where we share pictures of our work and uh, inspire each other with different uh, tutorials and, uh, and all kinds of really cool stuff. And uh, next week is my 100th episode. So be sure to tune in next week at 1 p.m. I'm probably going to have a couple friends over and we're going to do some wire stuff. So I got to work on some new designs. And uh, yeah, so thanks for watching, everybody. And we'll definitely see you the next time. Okay, talk to you soon. Bye.